Hi, this is Steve Palladino. Um, going to do a little uh, a little play with with uh, numbers here on Elliot uh, Kipchoge's uh, new one fifty nine forty uh, uh, time for for covering the marathon. And what we're going to try to do is estimate his uh, his power, and then also what his uh, FTP might be. Uh, of course, this is all hypothetical, um, and uh, but it's fun. Let's let's uh, go ahead and give it a try. Um, first thing, um, the uh, the the calculator you see is my own personal um, sort of what if uh, calculator, playing around with uh, with uh, scenarios, what if scenarios. And uh, the first part is driven by the, the running effectiveness uh, equation, where running effectiveness equals speed in meters per second divided by uh, power in watts per kilogram. So basically, uh, if we input on these yellows over here, uh, we input a marathon distance here, and we input uh, uh, Elliot Kipchoge's time, and then we input the uh, weight. This is a commonly um, referred to weight for him, 126 pounds or 57 kilograms. And then we have to sort of guess at what his running effectiveness would be. Now, with the uh, non-wind stride, running effectiveness is higher because um, your uh, speed to power ratio uh, is higher, and when you add in air power, uh, that creates more power, in other words, more on the denominator, and uh, that means running effectiveness is, is lower in terms of a number. So uh, let's first just play around with uh, if he was wearing the non-wind uh, stride version, the uh, older uh, foot pod. And so I figure, um, and I've done some prior work after his world record, um, I, I figured he's you know at least 1.03 to 1.04 in terms of his running effectiveness. I could be wrong, could be lower, I uh, could even be higher, but I, I think these are probably the 1.04 to 1.03 is a pretty good range. Um, I coach an athlete that has run marathons at one point uh, zero two five. So I figure he's, he's up here. So with these inputs and running effectiveness of 1.04, 1.03, that gives us an estimate of his uh, power for this marathon at 5.65 to 5.71 watts per kilogram. Um, the uh, you know, and the power based on his weight, if we convert the watts per kilogram, would be about 322 to 325 watts. Um, now, if he is running effectiveness is lower, and this is true for every, everybody, if your running effectiveness is lower, it's going to take more power to cover the same distance, same uh, duration. So, um, if his running effectiveness was lower at 1.02, is his power would have to be uh, 5.07 uh, or 5.76 watts per kilogram, 328 watts. Um, so there you can see those uh, how how the numbers are generated. I guarantee you he's not down here. <laughs> he's not down uh, below 1.00 and probably not even at 1.00. Somewhere up here. Uh, so these numbers right in here. Now the next part of the the uh, the the game here is to figure his Rigel exponent because what we need to do to convert his race power to what his FTP might be, we have to play with the Rigel formula, and primarily we're playing with the Rigel exponent. So I figure um, again I have a, a very good elite marathoner who's Rigel exponent is uh, minus 0 0.06 to minus 0 0.05. And uh, I figure he's somewhere in there. So 
he could be as low as uh, minus 0 0.03. Probably, I would, I would guessing, uh, minus 0 0.04 is the best guess. And um, minus 0 0.04 as a Rigel exponent would mean that he ran the marathon at around 96.5 or 96.6% 9, of his threshold power. Um, if we uh, go with a uh, uh, more negative Rigel exponent, and this is about as high as I would go with him, or as, as more negative as I'd go with him, um, you know, it's not, uh, uh, percent of the FTP is is 95.7 percent of the FTP. So he's somewhere between 95.7 and 97.4 uh, percent of FTP is what he was running at. Um, and if we use this and uh, want to look at the FTP, um, which is what we want to do, um, his FTP is probably based on a, a uh, Rigel exponent of minus 0 0.03, somewhere between uh, 5.80 and 5.86 watts per kilogram if we're using that running effectiveness. You can see that the, his FTP would have to be higher uh, to support the higher power required if RE was lower. So going back to my best guess here, um, we're, we're saying about 96.5, 96.6% of FTP. That means his FTP is somewhere around 5.85 to you know, maybe 5.97 um, watts per kilogram. Um, so that is for the non-wind stride. Now the wind stride is a little, uh, you know, throws a little twist because it uh, includes or adds in the power to overcome air resistance. And we know he was pacing. Um, and we know the conditions were calm. So, you know, the, the percent that of, of power added might be uh, to reporting in a, in a wind version of the stride, you know, might have been, you know, 2%, uh, maybe 3% at the speed he was running. And then you have to also figure the, 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 the gains by drafting, you know, uh, it, it could be 1%. 2% off of that. So um, we're going to say uh, the, the effect there of adding the air power is adding power, adding num additional power to the denominator in this, this um, running effectiveness. And that means running effectiveness is lower by the same, uh, roughly the same percent. So we're going to say that if he was running, if his running effectiveness was 1.03 um, with the uh, non-wind version, he might be 1.01 with the wind version of stride. Um, and if that is correct, then his power with the wind version of stride would have been 5.82 watts per kilogram, 331 almost 332 watts. Let's say he was even down here, 5.88 watts per kilogram or 335 watts. So if he was up here with the wind, non-wind version, then he's somewhere down here with his um, wind version of stride if he was wearing that. And if we use that same Rigel exponent minus uh, 0 0.04, it's the same percentage of FTP he'd be running at, but his FTP, because of the, the running effectiveness, um, requiring higher power, um, his FTP would be somewhere in the low sixes, 6.03 to 0, 6.09 watts per kilogram. That's with the stride version. So hopefully this gives you an idea of uh, what Eli Kipchoge actually did. It's, it's a guess where we don't know. We'll probably never know for sure. Um, 
but um, I think it's a reasonable guess, and I hope you'll enjoy the video. Thank you.